Hello, let's solve this contour integral by a new method. This method was suggested by an audience, the one random fool. And here I put a screenshot for that comment. There are two advantages for this method comparing with the method in my previous video. The first one is, we don't need to construct the log z square term in a numerator, so this method is more intuitive. The second one is, this method only needs to calculate two residues, so it saves the computation load by half. And let's get started. Here is a summary from my previous video, so I just quickly go through it. And you can click here to watch my previous video to see more details. So here we factorize the denominator, and then we can find the four complex roots, and we mark them on the complex plane. So the denominator can be written into this form. And here is the new method. So first, we draw the semicircle contour here, and then we take the branch cut on the negative imaginary axis. In this case, we choose the principal branch from negative pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. So this contour contains four parts, c1, c2, c3, and c4. And by Cauchy residue theorem, we can write this contour integral into this form. For the integral on c1, we write it into this way. For the integral on c2 and c4, by doing some analysis, we can show both of them are zeros. And it's very similar to the analysis in my previous video. And you can click here to see it. For the integral on C3, because this is definite integral, so we are free to choose the integration variable. So I choose t as the integration variable. And then we do the substitution. We let t equals to minus z. And then we plug in the substitution, so we got here. And note for this lower integral limit, it converted from minus infinity to infinity. And then we expand the power for the denominator. e to the power 2 pi i equals to 1. And e to the power 4 pi i is also equal to 1. So we got here. And next, for the numerator, we write the product into the sum. And for the second term, it equals to pi i. So after plugging the simplified results for the numerator and the denominator, and we got here. And then we use this negative sign to flip the integral limit. So we got here. I copy them here. And then we plug in these four integrals into the top equation. For the left-hand side, we group them into a single integral. And then we split this integral into the real part and the imaginary part. So in the next slide, we will calculate the residues for the right-hand side. Here is our function, and the note for the denominator can be factorized into this form. After plugging the denominator, we got here. Because z1 is a simple pole for this function, so we just calculate the limit here. After plugging the fz, we got here. And these two terms cancel out. After plugging z equals to z1, we got here. And record the four roots. After plugging the four roots, and then we do some algebra to simplify it, so we got the residue for z1. For the residue on z2, we can calculate it similarly. And here is the result for these two residues. And then we just take the sum for these two residues, so we got here. And the record the equation we just derived in the previous slide. And the next, we just plug in the result for the sum of these two residues. And then we simplify the right hand side, so we got here. I copy it here. So for this equation, we let the real part equals to the real part, and the imaginary part equals to imaginary part. And then for this right equation, we divide 2 on both sides, so we got here. And for this blue equation, we cancel the pi i on both sides, so we got here. And finally, we replace z by x to go back to the real domain. So we got the final answer.
and they are identical to the results in my previous video. And don't forget to subscribe my channel and give a like. That's all for today, and thank you for watching.